Okay, tell me about your character in Beautifully Broken. Okay, so Beautifully Broken is a story of hope, first of all. It's a complete story of hope. And it's uh, this incredible film about three families whose lives become intertwined, and each family helps to heal the other family. And I play Andrea, who at 12 years old experiences an event that absolutely destroys her. Um, it makes her feel alone, it makes her feel unseen, and it makes her feel essentially like she doesn't matter as a person. And throughout the film, you see her trajectory through pain. And it isn't until she reaches out to a pen pal in Africa, Umahosa, and eventually reveals her pain to her family that she's able to find so much hope and realize that she's not alone and she does matter, regardless of how somebody has treated her and regardless of what she's been through. So what is it about her best friend that she, you know, she's just writing her, it's just a pen pal, but it becomes her best friend. What is it about um, her that she sees in her? I think the thing about Uma Hosa that brings so much comfort to Andrea is that Uma Hosa is just listening to her. She has no judgment. And because she's far away from her, I think that creates a, a really positive connection because because they don't know each other they have to come they have to communicate via letters and there's something so impactful about that because they both have to take time to think about what they're gonna say and I don't know I think like if I was writing somebody I would feel much more connected to them rather than just texting them so I think that's a big reason why they become so close and her going you know this kind of is later on in the movie but going to Africa how do you think that changes her I think when Andrea went to Africa, I think first of all she's able to put her pain into other people and that becomes almost her vent. And as of right now, Andrea works for a missionary company in Nairobi, Kenya. And I think it's just such an incredible lesson that we all can benefit from that you know, you don't have to wallow in your pain. You can use it and you can use it to be a light. Yeah. And so you were able to connect with the real Andrea and were you? I was. Yeah. I didn't get to meet her while we were filming in Louisiana, but then when we flew to South Africa and shot there to cheat it as Rwanda, I met her and I had been speaking with her parents, but getting to meet her was absolutely incredible and terrifying too because when you're portraying a real person it just there's so much more pressure because you want to do justice to their story oh for sure and talk about the experience of being in South Africa that's pretty awesome it was amazing yeah there was I remember there was one scene they were shooting and I wasn't in the scene but I went to set that day and they were shooting out the refugee camp and like you looked in the background and there was a giraffe head like a, like a real giraffe and I was like that's amazing yeah. for a continuity air to be a giraffe like yeah. you can't be mad about that yeah. it's amazing that's amazing okay so how was it when you were first reading the script what was it that drew you to the, to the project the thing that drew me to the project is first of all we all experience pain to some capacity and each character in the film experiences pain in a very different way but yet they're all able to shine a light for each other mm -hmm. and for me, I think we all created this film in hopes of letting people feel less alone. I hope when people walk into the theater and come out, I hope they feel their pain has been acknowledged and honored. And like I said, I hope they walk out feeling less alone than they were before. Yeah. Uh, so what really drew me to it was just the idea that we could make a film that would make others feel seen in their pain. Now, do you relate to you know the faith elements of the film? And, Absolutely. And was that, okay. Absolutely, yeah. I. Um, I grew up not really believing in God. I had a Christian mom, but my dad was primarily atheist and I kind of took his side on okay. those issues. But when I was 12 years old, he passed away. And I actually, that's when I started developing my faith. And I was kind of at a dark point and I was like, God, like transform this pain. And I literally prayed. I said, God, please bring a project along that I can pour all my pain into. And a week later, Beautifully Broken came along. Wow. So it's just an incredible, um, incredible thing that he did yeah. to bring all of us to this film and use our pain to shine a light. Well, that's awesome because your character, you know, she kind of comes to faith. Um, they don't necessarily show it, but it seems like she comes to faith kind of later, like absolutely. teenage years or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you were kind of in the same in the situation. Same. Absolutely. I think it's so interesting. We usually tend to think we should hide our pain, but really when we use it, we go so much further and, you know, we shouldn't conceal our scars. They, they are what make us beautiful. Not to quote the title of the film, but 
it, they are very important in our journey. Yeah, and you've been in the industry since you were young, yeah. right? When did you yes. start? Well, I'm from Ojai, California. I grew up on a ranch. I played with tractors. I got bitten by a snake. I played in the creek. Yeah. And one day I said, Mom, I would love to try community theater. No hopes of going further. I just wanted to try it for fun. And so I went to the Ojai Art Center. I did a production of Stuart Little, Velveteen Rabbit. And then I decided to do a production of The Music Man with Tracy Williams. And I had no line. I just gave a thumbs up. And somebody spotted me. Her name was Janine Cosden. And she was a manager. And she said, I would really, she approached us after uh, one of the showings. And she said, I would really like to represent Emily and kind of introduce her to the business. And we were super hesitant, but then yeah. We said, you know what, we'll just try it for fun. What, who can it hurt? And one of my first auditions, and my first voiceover audition ever was for Toy Story 3, and I booked it. And so that was an incredible project to be a part of. I'm still so thankful. Yeah, that's amazing. So going forward, you're kind of, you know, in your adult years coming up and stuff, how are you um, hoping, you know, to choose roles? Like what is gonna be your influence on choosing roles? And mm -hmm. For me, I just, I always wanna do projects that will uplift someone. I never wanna do a project that's gonna make somebody feel bad about themselves uh, or that's just morally wrong. I just, as long as a project makes somebody feel hopeful, yeah. I'm totally down to do it. I mean, that can be a superhero role, that can be action role, that can be something dramatic like Beautifully Broken. I'm cool with anything as long as it uplifts somebody in the audience. Yeah, this came for you. I think it's time for me to make good on that promise I made to you. Holding on to the past will only destroy what lays before us. Now tell us the truth about what happened. Randy, I love you. True friends are always there for each other. You are very sneaky. We love surprises. <laughs> Your life is not where you've come from, but what you do with the days before you.